All right, I'm about to finally trash these blocks. They're getting a little cloudy from all the wood, denim, and lead being drug into them, but should be able to see the 410 hit them here. So we'd be doing these 410 deer slugs here. I will be eventually doing these at longer ranges, at least 50 yards, hopefully 75, 80, maybe 100. We'll see how it goes. Um, I already have videos shooting both of these out to 100 yards, no problem, as far as accuracy goes, at least. Well, as far as accuracy goes for a shotgun, it'd be a little difficult to hit this block at 100 with these. Um, I would have to make some bigger blocks, which is in the works. But anyways, today we're just going to be shooting about 5 yards. So we're just starting out close here to see what happens up close, which I think I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> I've seen these put in the blocks before. I have not seen a Remington put in the block before. These are both the two and a half inch fifth ounce. Winchester's advertising 1830 feet per second, which I actually have an old chrono video where I tested this, or one of them at least, over a chrono, and I think it was like just over 1800, so those are going that fast. And then the uh, Remington Sluggers here, also two and a half, one fifth ounce. I'll look up the advertised velocity on this and put it in the video here because they do not put it on the box. So there's what each slug looks like. So that Remington might hold to be, uh, together better. What I've seen from these, and it was a close range test, or close-ish range test at least, these just flat wafer when they hit ridiculously short amount of penetration you would never think that would be a good idea for a deer my thought process is is that further out once these things lose velocity that they're actually going to hold together somewhat decently which is why i really want to at least get it out 40 50 yards and see what happens because i think i know what's going to happen today it's just going to completely flatten out wafer and a little disc and break up into pieces and our penetration is going to suck but maybe this remington will hold together better with that flat nose as opposed to this makeshift hollow point look at the bend on that it's like curving to the left there that one is not straight um i don't know we'll see but they're soft lead so it may not make any difference whatsoever with that tip being slightly different it's probably going to do the same thing um it may be hardened lead or somewhat hardened lead on the remington you can see the finish if this thing would stay in focus is slightly different on the Remington but we'll see what happens so this is just kind of like a uh, I guess home defense type scenario since I'm only going to be shooting five yards into the block here and then like I said I'll have coming up at some point 40 50 yards at least and hopefully further um, so for those 100 yard shots and I actually have video even going out 150 200 yards just for fun with the 410 and a whole bunch of other 410 goodness check out the 410 playlist on the channel but we'll get started here this is Knox 10% ballistics gelatin you can see my BB there calibration is coming in at 3.3 inches today which is perfect I'll have two blocks set up in case we get passed through the first block which is by the way these are 12 inch blocks I'll have a measurement for penetration and if anything's left of these things after we hit the blocks retained weight and measured expansion diameter at the end of the video and this should blow these off the table <laughs> so I'm actually I got a little tarp I'm going to put down the and I brought some water with me so hopefully we can catch them and keep them from going in the mud but we'll see and this is the firearm I'm using today it's just a Rossi it's actually the youth model part of the matched pair I also have a 22 barrel for it at home um what's the barrel length on that i'll throw it up in the video but it's not too long because it's a youth model and this is a modified choke smooth bore and this is the exact same gun i used in that video where i chronoed one of those i can't remember if it was that one or the three inch or whatever but i think they're both advertised 1800 because the three inch is a heavier slug going about the same velocity but we did hit 1800 feet per second uh, with this in that old chrono video again check out the 410 playlist if you want to see that plus i use this very gun to get those very slugs that we're shooting today out to 100 yards accurately with just that little bead sight there so again check out the 410 playlist for that i'll get my tarp put up i'm going to take some practice shots on this target at the exact same distance because we only got one shot at this i want to get a nice dead 
center shot there. No nicks, no edge shots or anything like that. I'm excited to see what happens, guys. So let me get the rest of this set up and we'll set them in the block. Also, just a real quick note, guys. I also have other 410 slug tests in the ballistics gelatin, close range and out to 4050 at least coming up. Got some burning keys to test and others as well. And I want to give a big thanks to my buddy John at Boomstick Revenge for letting me use the range today. All right, we are ready to go, and I'm going to hit it with the Winchester slug first, and then I'll spin it around and hit it with the Remington. So here we go with the Winchester. Yay, the tarp worked, at least for that shot. <laughs> I was getting worried. I was like, no, 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 stop. Let me get the setup here and we'll take a look at it. You can see a massive permanent cavity there. All right, so down here is clearly part of the wad there. And I am not seeing anything left of this slug, man. There's gunpowder. Well, I guess that's probably buffer all over it. So dead center entry just like we wanted there get some measurements mass <laughs> massive bloom that's the largest I've seen yet but I knew it was gonna be big it tore out the top here too see that in two different spots so if there was more gel here uh, the wound cavity would have been even larger but it reached the end of the gel there none out the bottom though and yeah, I see absolutely nothing left of that slug. I don't see it. <laughs> it just completely fragmented. Unless, yeah, I just, there's nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> what, what is concerning to me, I don't see any. So the entry's dead center. And it looks like it stayed center. So I was like worried, like, oh, what if it came out the top? And it may have, but I don't know. I will be dissecting this, cutting it like per inch to see what we can find. But uh, let me spin it around. We'll do the Remington, see what happens with that one and go from there. I may be retaking shots. So let's do the Remington first and see what happens. Do that, let me get measurements on this. But that's typical of what I've seen in the one test that I did see. It just completely broke up and it only made it five or six inches, which is pretty much exactly what we're looking at here. So I don't know if anything really exited the block. I got five and a half there. As far as the it's gonna be hard to see for you guys with the reflection here, but the permanent cavity width looks like about four, or just a hair in hair over four inches from here to there, permanent wound cavity there. Actually, let me flip this over, see what we can see from the bottom. Kind of the same story. I was hoping the sun, it was supposed to be sunny today, would come out and help light this up for us. But, I mean, you can see it, so. And yeah, I don't see nothing, so. I don't even see lead fragments, so unfortunately, I think it did come out the top there. But like I said, let's uh, we'll spin them around, hit it with the Remington, see what happens, and then I'm hoping uh, maybe I can retake that Winchester and get a capture, or at least of something. But I don't know if it'll just be like little fragments or a piece or what. But I'm not seeing any fragments. That's why I said I'll dissect it an inch at a time. Um, but let's get this Remington in there and, and then go from there. That was cool. Flipped it up on top of the other one. Uh, maybe a piece. Let's see. Ooh, ooh, it's pretty split up there. I gotta be careful not to tear it. Uh, I don't know, guys. Did we really get that lucky? And they both, whatever little shard was left, exit out the top. Perfectly centered hit again. So, obviously on this one we got this huge tear coming out the top there. Well, sorry, that's the bottom, I think. I flipped it, didn't I? No, that was the top. 
bottom's got a little split right here too and so unless that's a piece yep that's a piece of lead right there so that's what's left of the Remington there's a piece of lead right there too so it does look like we captured the Remington or at least as much of it as we can capture because right there's what's left of it the main base so we get some measurements on this one real quick I mean overall they're looking pretty dang similar so again don't know if you can see it with the glare there's the edge of the permanent for the Remington four and a quarter depth it's hard to see with the angle for you guys but about six inches there on the Remington so pretty similar but if anything it actually looks like the Remington did just a hair more we got a quarter inch more here and about a half inch more on the penetration of course that's if we didn't lose what we had left of the Winchester out the top of the block there you know what let's do a little side by side here hey there's a piece of lead right there from something from one of those slugs because that's the only thing I've been shooting today all right side by side from the bottoms Winchester Remington there's your entry holes yeah it looks like the the Remington there especially upon initial impact definitely hit harder which is surprising honestly because I think the uh, Winchester's advertised higher velocity honestly but it may not hold together as much I don't know you're seeing it for the first time here <laughs> along with me and there's side by side Winchester Remington does look a little larger with the Remington let me get uh, I'm gonna examine this a little more closely off camera see if I can see any pieces of lead because like in this one I found two already um, we'll pull out what we got from the Remington here and I'm gonna spin them around and take another shot with each from the other side but give me a sec see if I can find anything in this and then we'll pull those little pieces out first of the Remington just want you guys to see this real quick before I tear it up too much getting these out so this was that furthest piece and again we'll get a weight on that at the end which ain't much but I think there's actually multiple you can see that one super easy and it's hard to see but I think there's another piece right there and potentially a piece right there as well I'm gonna try to dig them out here nope those other things I thought may have been pieces of lead were actually little pieces of cardboard you know probably these little round disc things that got shoved in there so just this biggest piece that went clear to the end and then that other one up here that was easy to see for the Remington there and I did find one piece of lead with the Winchester here and it's real interesting where it's located <laughs> I didn't pull it out yet it's right here in the front just immediately sheared off so that's all that's in there from the Winchester that's that's all I can find so I don't know if the rest of it just like literally powdered or we just can't see it and like I said I'm gonna dissect this inch by inch at the end of the video here to see if we're missing anything but I don't see anything in there and that's the only thing I could find so I don't know if there's a chunk that was left that came out the top here or not but that's why we're retaking with each so we'll get set up and do it all over again one of each again all right here we go with the Winchester again my tape measure <clears throat> there's a piece of lead this time really <laughs> that's definitely a piece that came out the top there we just keep losing the Winchester but there's a little piece there it looks like there's a piece down in there too <sighs> okay so once again dead center entry I don't see any lead in the very beginning this time crack out the top uh, well, hang on. So this was the top. This is just a split. Definitely nothing exited out the top there. So where we may have had the exit 
was the bottom there because I had to flip this over. Okay, so we got a piece there. Like I said, I think maybe a piece down there. Again, I'll take the forceps or whatever the heck those things are called and uh, <clears throat> pull out what I can. Oh, wait. <laughs> I just keep ignoring the actual chunk that's right there at the very end. So I do believe, I mean, it's, there's something in there. That time we got about six and a quarter inches of penetration. Okay. So there's from the way we're actually shot into it. This was the top of block and down in there she is. And I don't see anything on the table here. There's uh yeah, that's just holes from where I've shot up the table. So all right, let's try another one with the Remington now. All right, cool. We caught a little more of the Remington this time as well. So once again, perfect shot. Kind of hard to miss at five yards. <laughs> so there's the top of the block. It does seem like the overall is just, it keeps averaging slightly larger. I mean, it's a small difference, but it seems like it's consistently a little larger with the Remington. There's a the piece there you can see clear as day. And then you see these tracks down here. Got more pieces there. Let me get a measurement real quick. I don't know why I closed this thing. So from that one down in there, well, only about five and a half that time. I was trying to tell if my, I think it's just cracking the table from the impact of these things pushing the gel out so fast and so far so here's the bottom yeah about four that time and you can see clearly we've got a big piece there and a big piece there and that actually looks like the base kind of hard to tell i'll get these pulled out and we'll look but yeah as you can see there close range you're getting no penetration with these slugs you're getting between five and six inches of penetration because that soft lead with that flat nose or with the Winchester, the uh, makeshift hollow point. They just completely break up and fragment when they hit close range. So that's why I really want to get out, you know, 40, 50 yards, which I honestly think that's about as far as anyone's going to even attempt to shoot, like say a deer for those who would use 410 for deer hunting. Well, I think that's probably about as far as anyone's going to take a shot on a deer with a 410. So I want to get out 40, 50 yards. I, I have another one with a scope so I can shoot accurately enough at 50 at least. I'm still going to make slightly larger blocks than this, but hope I'm hoping at 40, 50 yards that with the loss in velocity, because these things do slow down pretty quick because they're pretty light. I mean, they're even light, light compared to a pistol bullet. I mean, these are like, oh, I'll throw it up on the screen, but uh, one fifth ounce is like 97, 103 grains, somewhere around in there, maybe 80s. You know, so they come in way lighter than even a nine millimeter, the lightest of nine millimeters, well, the standard weight velocity. And your typical nine millimeters like 115 124 grains uh, so being lighter they slow down faster automatically but then also with that flat face um, they are not aerodynamic so they slow down very fast which is another reason most people believe not to shoot a deer with a 410 in very far range at all because it's just not going to have much power more than 30 or 40 yards out there because it slows down so fast however if you shoot a deer at five or ten yards with these I don't know that it's, <laughs> it, it might reach vitals, man. I don't know, but especially like this is just bare block. So what if you hit a rib bone, you know, you might only get like three or four inches of penetration. It might not really do much to the deer if it's too freaking close. So I'm hoping out there 40, 50 yards that the loss of velocity might be enough to where these things will actually somewhat stay together. And then, you know, maybe we'll get double penetration or something. So I will definitely have that coming up. Um, hopefully within the next few months. I'm probably done with gel testing, depending on how mild the winter is. I'm, you know, I don't know. Last winter here in Ohio was pretty mild. And it's pretty mild again so far this year. So I might be able to do more tests throughout the winter. But hopefully at least by springtime, I'll be getting these out there 40, 50 yards to try again. See if they hold together and penetrate further. Then, like I said, I have more 
410 slug test coming up. Again, we'll start close with those and see what happens with those that close. And then for the ones that are accurate enough, at least, be doing 40, 50 yards. Um, the burning keys, as far as I know, is really the way to go. Uh, so I definitely have videos on those coming up as well. But I'm going to shut up here and we'll get the rest of these pieces out and then uh, we'll wrap this up. I got some interesting finds here, though. <laughs> so there's the, uh, this is the Winchester and this was the Remington. I found that uh, freaking wad there sitting right there about four and a half inches into the block there. <clears throat> and then clear at the back was these two were together. And then that little piece was on, uh, what was either down in here or on the other side, not too far in, I can't remember. But yeah, so that wad on the, <laughs> that one made it four and a half inches in. The slug, what did we measure? Six, I believe. And it came out with this, which I was going to say, it's a chunk of wood. But that's actually those little cardboard wafers, I believe. Because it, yeah, it looks like they're peeling apart there. But that was with what's left of that slug there. So we got a decent chunk left that time. But what I find more amusing is the wad made it in instead of this stack of cardboard here. And then there's what I was able to pull out from that Remington. And this was the furthest piece there with the base, as you can see there, that made it the furthest. And I forgot I didn't bring any knife. Because um, I told you guys I was going to cut this first shot with the Winchester up to see if we found anything. Because I did not see anything whatsoever. So I'm just going to kind of tear it open here instead because I don't have my knife. I'm still not seeing anything. Like, where'd it go? <laughs> There's nothing in there. Well, we did find that one piece at the very entry but other than that there's just massive cuts through here yeah there's there's like there's an itty bitty little piece of lead right there in the center of the screen so i think on that one probably did have a little chunk at least that held together and then did just exit out the top there so, and maybe it was still connected with the water or something, and that's, you know, who knows? We didn't catch it. But all I'm seeing in here is a bunch of the buffer and crap, and yeah, there's, other than itty-bitty little pieces, there's nothing in that first shot from the Winchester. All right, so, retained weight. This is the only piece we found from the first Winchester. 8.6 grains, that's all that's left of that. Smallest piece on the first shot with the Remington, 3.9 grains. And then the largest piece we found at the end, 22.2 grains. Second shot with this Remington here, piece that went the furthest, 18.4. That one's 11 grains. That one's 15.2. And then on the second Winchester, we got this wad here. <laughs> That made it four and a half inches somehow. I think that probably like somehow stayed together, even though it's not really supposed to. I don't know. The wad just went in perfect to where it helped push it through, I think. 9.8 for the wad there. And then the furthest chunk was with that cardboard. 33.3. .3. The cardboard's 4.9 grains. And then that chunk, it's got some wood and cardboard and crap on it. 28.5, that furthest piece of the second Winchester, and then this little dinky guy there, 3.9 grains. I wasn't gonna really worry about expanded diameter, but I figured there might be a couple of you that would wanna see it. So these bases on the Remington that traveled to the end, they're both about the same size there, coming at about 30.379, I'm just gonna round it up, 38, so 38 caliber on those. This one chunk, you know, it's a little bit bigger, probably in the low 40 cals there, just because of the shape of it. And <clears throat> on that Winchester there, that's all we found from the first Winchester. And oddly, again, we found that in the very first half inch of the block, 0.5858 cal. 
This one looks similar. Yeah, about the same on the second Winchester that we actually found that at the end at 6 inches, 0.58, 58 caliber. Hoping you guys can hear me in the wind here. It just kicked up on me. So that's our results. Uh, like I said, it's about what I expected, at least from the Winchester, because I've seen those in the block close range before. Didn't know if the Remington would do really any different. And so, I mean, it seems like they, you know, they perform pretty much the same there at five yards. So if you're using 410 slugs for home defense, that's what you're getting only about five or six inches of penetration so i guess that's good if like you live in an apartment and you're worried about over penetration or anything like that plus with these being soft lead you know if you hit drywall and whatnot it's you know it should bust them up kind of the same so but as far as a hunting application goes for those who do hunt with 410 slugs for deer or maybe you know i don't know maybe some guys are out there hunting hogs with them and whatnot um up close here with these soft foster type slugs yeah five to six inches of penetration so like i said i will hopefully here sooner rather than later hopefully no more than a few months i'll be testing them at 40 50 yards and maybe they'll stay together at that longer range because they'll be going to slower velocity and then it'll be interesting to see what kind of penetration we can get if they have actually stay together somewhat halfway decent <clears throat> um, but again like i said link in the description if you want to see these very slugs shot out of this very gun accurately with just the bead sight at 100 yards as i mentioned earlier i also have some long range video i just put up like 150 200 yards shooting different slugs and i uh, also have uh, just a bunch of accuracy videos testing out a bunch like i said all the cheap ones i got ati and all the freaking names i can't even remember now the, the cheaper slugs that are kind of like no name imports but uh, yeah for anything 410 just go check out the 410 playlist on the channel if you guys want to get any of the products you see me use in any of my videos, like the uh, scale there, micrometer, caliper, even the Knox gelatin I use, steel targets, paper targets, target stand, and more. Links in the description for all of that. Thanks for stopping by and checking this one out, and I hope to catch you on the next one. You know it's baloney. <laughs> get ready to put these up here. I don't know why I didn't notice this earlier. Maybe the light changed, but there's definitely some pieces of lead there from the second Winchester. Still didn't really find anything in the first one. I mean, we tore that apart and didn't see anything. And then uh, <clears throat> one of the Remingtons here. You can see there's all kinds of chunks of lead in there too. So there's definitely, I mean, they're definitely fragmenting like crazy if you couldn't already tell, but there's more pieces in the blocks there that I didn't notice earlier.